back for basically the middle ground portion of this painting. But before I begin, I needed to finish the background a little bit more. So I am working on this tree right here, and I'm going to work a little bit on it, and then I'll, I'll segue to this middle ground, and I can always finish the top part later. But I wanted to share with you what I was doing. I basically mixed up my sap green and purple again. Of course, remember I'm using hookers and a little bit of red to make that sap green made a beautiful little green brown and the purple kind of grays it up a little bit and then what, what you want to do is make it very fluid I like the flat brushes I like the edge that they give me I don't have as much control with the round liner brushes but you might you might discover that you like those better so now that I have the tip loaded and I come in and I just, and I'm barely, barely, barely touching the canvas. As I do this, I'm supporting myself by putting my pinky there. And I just kind of guide it very gently around. And if it skips a little bit, that's okay. That's where some of the leaves will cover up anyway. You can also stamp if that's easier for you to control. Now this tree doesn't have as many branches on the left side as it does the right side. The scariest part is I'm having to really go in on top of my beautiful sky that I painted. And so if I mess this tree up, <laughs> I've lost that sky, right? Uh, so I have to be real gentle and very cautious with it. I can put a little bit of highlight by mixing a little bit of yellow and just a little bit of white. You want to be careful about using white until the, the bitter end because white is what's going to make things pop. And so we don't want to hold a whole lot of white in the background. And I can come in and just kind of tap some highlight there. A little bit more white. It's dulled down. There we go. So I'm tapping in just a little bit, and I'll take a, a blow up of this. Notice that uh, I'm, I'm not doing a whole big line of it. Same as is boring. So I want that to kind of blend a little bit with what I've already done. Voila. And then leaves will pretty much cover that part. And again, when I'm doing my leaves, I just love this brush. It's, it's so separated out, and I don't know if you can really see that. But I don't put a lot of paint. I do have it kind of wet and, and fluid here. So I'm going to tap in uh, kind of a green and yellow mixture maybe a little bit of white to tone it down because it's, it's a real light tree it, it's kind of airy and I'm just going to bar barely touch areas where I want that to be now I'll come over my stem work I may want to put some more stem work in, and I'll work on that tree here later because that's away from what I want to show you here. Perfect. You know, we didn't talk about easel as one of our supplies. An easel is optional. Some people like to work flat, but I highly recommend it. You have more control when you are using your entire arm as opposed to just doing this. You also don't make quite as big of a mess because you're not leaning over the paint, right? So that's important. Alright, so let's talk about what we have going on here. Uh, I added a little bit more shadows because I kind of want to work on that ground part a little bit. And when I look at my picture, I have a lot of light areas, but in order for those light areas, and I have some dead wood, 
Now I think I don't know that I want that dead wood, but I have kind of some gray ground that's kind of going in and in there a little bit. So I'm going to take my brownish mixture and add some white. That's another thing. I'm, I'm not working with any true browns. I haven't even put brown out as part of my palette for you to look at. Reason being is because some paint straight out of the tube just don't have that nice muddy feel. I also bring more unity to my painting to limit my paint palette somewhat. So I have chosen my colors and I'm going to stick with those colors. Even if I have to mix my own browns or my own grays, you know, because that way I get better unity. So I'm going to put in a little bit of this light color in here because we've got a little bit of sand going on up there. I want to have an, a pretty obvious line where that brown stops. I'll put that in. And now I'll start putting in some of my details. And again, I can work on those details here later, but I can come in and start actually putting in some grasses. I'm just going to kind of basically scribble on it a little bit so that that green shows through, that brown shows through. I'm using kind of a light color. I may switch here and pick up some green. So now I've got some green and yellow. Again, I'll come through and kind of scribble a little bit because it's all just grasses back in there. Uh, my paint is very fluid. I'm even going to pick up some of this gray now. Some darks, some whites. And it may take me a little bit of time, but I'm going to put dark on top of the light, and I'll put light on top of the dark. Now, it's going to take me some time to get all that done, but I want to share with you the water, because I think the water is probably going to be one of the more exciting things that happens here. The water that we have on our pond is very clear, and because it's very clear, it is reflecting pretty much all of the colors. It's reflecting the sky, it's reflecting the, you know, trees, it's, it's just reflecting everything. So there's not a whole lot of muddy color. Plus it wasn't windy when I took this photograph. And so, here's what happens. Anytime you have a reflection, wherever this body of work is. So here, here's, the, here's this tree right here. It would fold down right at the base of that tree and be a reflection, would be a mirror image of that tree. So if I measure that tree and come down, that right there is about where the top of that tree will be. All right, in terms of my colors. Well, I know it's green. And I'm, I'm just going to, in fact, what I'll do to help you guys out so you can see it, I'm going to take white just so you can see it. And I'm going to come in and basically draw where I think those reflections will end, right? That one you probably won't see because it's going to be way up here. I'm also going to have a little bit of the reflection of this ground just because. So I'm going to put that in, and there'll be reflection over here, okay? And then this tree, now this tree is leaning this way, it's got to lean this way on the reflection, right? So if I come here, 
here, here, here. The top of that tree is going to be right in here. Okay? There's the top of that tree. And then all this other tree line will be probably about right in here. And then we have a little bitty tree line right in here. Okay? And then this tree goes this way. Alright? And then you have this tree. So this one here, the top of it is about right there. There's a little tree there. Yep, there we go. That gives you kind of an idea of where I'm going to be putting these colors. I'm going to use my larger flat brush here, a half inch. I'm going to wash that my good new brush really well. When you do, you want to get your hands in there. Really make sure that paint's out before, because I don't want to ruin the tip. I'm going to kind of squeeze that tip like here. And when you're storing these brushes, here's another really cool tip that you can do. You can take uh, some dishwashing liquid, put it in the brush, and work your tip, right? Then let it dry. The next day, the dishwashing liquid will dissolve out of it when you get it wet, and you're good to go. Okay, so we are just going to basically put in some muddy color. Alright, I've got muddy color in here. this blue that I have and white. I don't need a lot of blue. I put out just a little bit. I will probably need a little bit more white than I have. I'm going to make two piles of white. One that I'm going to fully mix and the other that I can just kind of pick up as I go. Because uh, my water is actually reflecting the clouds. Um, I'm using a dirty brush because I'm going to pick a little bit of that green in there. Again, it's real easy 
when this is dry, come back in and take watered down paint and do a little bit more glazing to it. And maybe put in some like little grasses that are that are coming in here. And again, I will take my brush and go over that. So, so there's a little hint of those grasses coming through. I've gotten this far. So now what I want to do is basically work on this area here to finish it out. I'm not going to really show you that, I don't think, because I, it's really pretty much the same. The only difference is that the details that I'll have in here will be a little crisper. I'll show you when I get finished. When I get finished, what I'll have is a background that I can play around with my idea. And so really all of this is just going to become background instead of a landscape painting. But at least you've gotten an idea of how you might go about painting your own landscape painting.